So, thank you very much for coming here today. Merci beaucoup pour avoir venu ici aujourd'hui à Tansé, à Tapoué, um, pour, uh, pour avoir venu. I'm here to talk about plans for transit in Winnipeg. This election is an opportunity to change the way the city of Winnipeg works for citizens, and that includes transit. It also offers some clear choices. I'll start by saying something that may surprise you. I agree with Gord Steves about something. I don't think that bus rapid transit or BRT is the way to go for our city, and if elected, I will not proceed with it. That's where our agreement ends though. It's not enough to say that you're just going to cancel BRT and not replace it with something. Winnipeg has seen enough of that over our history. We need a modern transit system that works for everyone. And considering the thought and work that has gone into BRT, people deserve a good explanation of why it isn't the right choice. BRT is expensive. The next leg is expected to cost $600 million, and that's because bus rapid transit is more about pouring concrete than it is about moving people. The planned route through the Parker wetlands doesn't make sense, and it doesn't contribute to the much needed redevelopment of Pembina Highway. It is a huge amount of money to be spending on transit that only serves the south end of the city. Other cities like Ottawa are abandoning BRT in part because it has never lived up to its promises. Some kinds of transit help increase property values. BRT is not one of them. If we are going to replace it, we should replace it with something better. I am propo proposing three phases of transit development in the city of Winnipeg. Phase one is to implement a metro bus plan for Winnipeg. It is based on a very simple idea. If you want more people to ride transit, make it as convenient and more convenient than it is presently. A metro bus system is about better planning. Instead of building a BRT system locked and imprisoned in concrete and expecting people to show up, a metro bus system means sending buses to where people live, where they want to go, and when they actually need them. In a city where it goes down to minus 30, people should not be waiting 30 to 45 minutes for a bus. A metro bus system means extending routes and hours and increasing the frequency of buses to every 5 to 12 minutes. With that kind of service and reliability, you can leave your car at home and it may not be glamorous though, but it is low cost, it is effective, and it works. In 1996, Quebec City, which has roughly the same population as the city of Winnipeg, shifted to this model. And they saw a 5% increase in the number of riders actually taking public transportation. And they have continued to see growth in their, the number of people taking the metro bus system year after year. A metro bus system can improve transit for everyone, both students, seniors, commuters, across the city at a fraction of the cost of BRT. Now, phase two of my plan is about tackling some of the, tackling, tackling, excuse me, some of the major obstacles to traffic and some of the major infrastructure costs that happened in the city of Winnipeg. The replacement costs for the Arlington Street Bridge is estimated to be over $100 million. The cost of an underpass at Waverly and Taylor is unknown, but could easily reach over $50 million. The people who sit stuck in traffic at railroad crossings can all see that, that there are a lot more oil tankers going through our city than there used to be. In fact, rail shipments of oil, of oil in Canada, are up for, from 144 cars five years ago to 128,000 in 2013 and that could triple beyond that. It took a tragedy at Lac Megantic to alert people to the dangers of shipping oil. We need to ask ourselves, when does it stop making economic sense for the city to spend hundreds of millions and even perhaps billions of dollars for bridges as well as under and overpasses to route traffic around rail lines and when does it make sense to move those rail lines outside of the city of Winnipeg? We build an underpass at Waverly and Taylor when we might be able to move the rail line instead for much less. Why replace the Arlington Bridge 
when if we move the rail yards out of the city, we don't have to build a new bridge at all. That is phase two, a costed action plan to get rail traffic out of Winnipeg. The Social Planning Council of Winnipeg has already done a lot of legwork on this issue, but they need $1.5 million to do the in-depth research required to produce a plan that we can put into action. There is an opportunity to reclaim and redevelop the lands at the center of the city and with redevelopment comes better revenue streams for the city. We can develop Centerport as the freight hub and generator of economic activity that it was always meant to be. This is an opportunity to untangle the knots of rails and roads and reorganize the city in a way that makes life easier for all citizens and more efficient for the movement of people, businesses, and even governments. U.S. studies have found relocating, relocating rail yards and has found it to be more efficient for citizens and railways. They use less fuel and we have had fewer accidents. It is important to know the Government of Canada provides funding under the Rail Relocation and Crossings Act that can cover half the cost of redeveloping a relocation plan and half the net cost of relocation. So the federal government already has money committed to this type of project. This brings me to phase three. If we move rail traffic and rail yards outside of the city, Winnipeg will have within its city limits a rail network that runs through established communities and neighborhoods from east to west, from north to south, and through downtown. It provides an opportunity for the city to repurpose existing rail lines within the city of Winnipeg and to build a light rail transit network. To take the rail lines from nearby, such as these ones, running parallel to Pembina, and to put right la light rail on it instead of bus rapid transit would be more efficient. And that is what I am proposing for phase three. So why would LRT work when BRT does not? LRT is also an expensive option, but it is only an expensive option when you need to buy new land, tear down people's property, expropriate, and all of a sudden lay new track. The infrastructure for railway is already here, and we don't need to tear down houses or any buildings. BRT does not encourage property development or raise property values the way that LRT does. LRT is the preferred choice for developers. For that very reason, other cities have also engaged in this process, such as Calgary, Edmonton, Sacramento, and many others, and they have done it in a way that has been affordable. And the choice of BRT versus LRT is made clear by the rail line that runs next to Pembina Highway. It is a line that could carry students and football fans to the University of Manitoba, and even bring people from as far as way as St. Norbert to downtown without disrupting or interfering in traffic on Pembina. Imagine for a moment what a different city we would have. Imagine a Winnipeg where we can get to a morning class at the U of M by rail from anywhere in the city. A Winnipeg where you can take your kids to a Friday night bombers game or a concert at the stadium by rail and bus without having to worry about parking or driving home. A Winnipeg where you can commute by rail from Transcona or Charleswood to the downtown core. Imagine walking with your kids or your grandchildren from your home in Riverview or Fort Rouge and traveling by rail to St. Norbert Station to spend a Saturday morning at the Farmer's Market. It is a city that we must imagine, that we can imagine, that we can build, and we can build it together. So, merci beaucoup. Tapwe akakitwam. Salamat. Are there any questions?